evening sir myself dr nishant uh, i will be presenting a case of uh, post burn hand deformity as a short case my patient 34 year old uh, male burn survivor daily labor by right. occupation right handed right. individual right. present presented to us a deformity of the uh, both hands post burn injuries history of present illness and treatment history uh, he sustained self inflicted burns by immolating him, himself with kerosene in 2019 After an argument with his wife, and he sustained flame burns over head, face, neck, both upper limbs and torso of about 35% of the total body surface area. Uh, the fires were doused immediately by the bystanders by pouring tap water, and was rushed to a local hospital, mm. uh, where he was managed initially and later transferred to a tertiary care center on the same day. Uh, he was admitted in a tertiary care center, and during the uh, uh, hospital stay, he was resuscitated adequately in a burn ICU, and there was no history of ventilatory support, and received symptomatic and supportive care. and uh, later he left against medical advice after 15 days of the hospital stay during his uh, period uh, uh, in the hospital stay after he was uh, he was provided with uh, splints and uh, uh, active physiotherapy and occupational therapy for the same later he got admitted in a nearby hospital uh, where uh, wounds were managed conservatively with uh, dr- daily dressings and multiple session, uh, sessions of uh, serial bedside debridements were done which led to the formation of raw areas and uh, history of split skin grafting done for the raw areas over the neck and rest of the areas uh, over the upper limbs and the torso healed spontaneously over a period of 3 months with no residual raw areas he didn't receive any splints or uh, any uh, hand therapy or any specific positioning during the second hospital stay and later he was uh, discharged home uh, with uh, all wounds healed and was advised on the care for the grafted skin and was advised to follow uh, in the tertiary care center where he was managed initially and later he was lost to follow After a period of six months, he developed multiple deformities over a period of time, which gradually increased in severity in the multiple regions of the body, and admitted to the same tertiary care center where he was managed initially. He underwent a release of the post-burn contractures of the neck uh, with uh, split skin grafting, and followed by release of bilateral uh, post-burn contractures of the axilla. Uh, initially, right, left right axilla was released, followed by the left axilla with split skin grafting in a staged manner with a gap of three months, and he is on regular splint, splintage and therapy and pressure garments uh, since then. Uh, now uh, he has residual deformities of his both hands, uh, with which he is unable to grasp and hold uh, things firmly. And uh, these uh, deformities are further impairing his activities of daily living, and he is uh, totally dependent upon others. Personal and past history: He is married for 13 years, and he completed family. No history of medical comorbidities or any previous surgeries apart from the burn-related surgeries. Uh, he is right dominant individual, and there is no history of uh, uh, addicts not. Uh, addicted to any tobacco products or alcohol and bilateral bladder and sleep uh, habits and sleep and appetite were normal general physical examination uh, patient is moderately built and moderately nourished and there was no signs of pallor request cyanosis clubbing edema and vital data was within normal limits and systemic examination uh, cardiovascular respiratory system other system examination was normal uh, coming to the local uh, sir my history is complete sir i am uh, going ahead with uh, examination but Yeah, good. Carry on, no? Yeah, good. Yes, uh, local examination of both hands. Uh, first examination of the right hand. Uh, on inspection, uh, these were the photographs provided to me. Uh, both the dorsal and volar views and the lateral views of the hand, uh, upper limb, uh, till the elbows and uh, were uh, provided to me. On inspection, there is uh, scarring and contracture involving the dorsum of the hand, uh, which was extending, uh, the, which was extending proximally, uh, uh, dorsal contracture like proximally onto the distal uh, third of the forearm and. Distally, it is extending uh, onto the uh, fingers till the uh, uh, till the finger till all, almost reaching the level of the finger uh, fingertips uh, fingertips in the uh, ring middle and uh, in index fingers and little fingers, and with uh, uh, MCP joints in, in the hyperextension of all the uh, uh, MCP joints of uh, and hyperextension of all the uh, five fingers with uh, which is more in uh, thumb, little and uh, uh, ring fingers with uh, PIP joints in uh, uh, flexion. Uh, except for the uh, middle finger, uh, other four uh, other uh, four fingers were in PAP joint. Uh, uh, PAP joints were in uh, flexion. And uh, coming to the thumb, thumb is in uh, uh, MCP joint is in hyper extension and IP joint uh, in uh, flexion. Uh, uh, flexion with uh, uh, scarring also noted uh, along the dorsum of the uh, thumb. Uh, web spaces coming to uh, web spaces. Uh, first web space significantly. Uh, uh, reduced the span of the first web space is uh, reduced contracted and uh, uh, other second and third uh, uh, fourth web spaces there is also post burn syndactylization of the uh, remaining web spaces uh, coming to the volar aspect uh, 
polar aspect of the hand uh, uh, palm is uh, relatively straight uh, with the bones there is uh, no scarring noted in the palms and the uh, palm and the uh, palm are digital uh, on the molar surface of the digits are also uh, uh, spare and there is prominence of the metacarpal head of the thumb is seen with the reversal of uh, with loss of metacarpal uh, uh, arch is uh, appreciable uh, uh, on the wrist uh, dorsal aspect uh, and uh, volar aspect there is uh, scarring noted uh, with the uh, uh, wrist in neutral position wrist in neutral position and uh, the forearm uh, is relatively uh, spared uh, proximal and middle and uh, part of the distal uh, forearm were uh, really, uh, were uh, spared and were uh, unscarred on palpation, these uh, scars were uh, supple. Uh, there is no localized of temperature, and these scars were uh, supple and non-blanchable. Uh, sensations were uh, intact in the uh, all five fingers distally, and the vascularity of the hand is okay. Both radial and ulnar uh, pulsations were uh, felt. Uh, range of uh, movements, uh, sir. I have a uh, video for the same, sir, uh, showing the active and passive ranges. Uh, coming to the active ranges. Uh, 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 active MP joint flexion and PIP joint is flexion, uh, uh, but it is uh, is there. It is uh, uh, present in the middle finger and it is also present, but is uh, limited in the other four fingers. And uh, thumb uh, active range of movements are not possible. Coming to the passive ranges, uh, passive uh, IP joint extension of the thumb is possible and MP joint flexion is possible, but is, uh, and it is more than the active ranges. DIP joints of the uh, other remaining four fingers passive ranges are uh, uh, possible and more than the active ranges and uh, DIP passive ranges were complete and PIP uh, passive ranges were complete in the middle finger. Uh, in others, uh, uh, passive extension of the PIP joints is limited in the other four fingers. Coming to the local examination of the left hand, uh, on inspection, uh, there is similar deformity, uh, like as in uh, compared to the right hand, sim like similar de uh, deformity involving the scarring and contracture of the dorsum of the hand, uh, which is uh, extending uh, onto the, uh, which is extending the distally onto the fingertips on the dorsum of the fingers is noted, with MCP joints in hyperextension and PIP joints in flexion, except for the middle finger, which is in uh, PIP joint, which is in extension. And uh, web spaces, first web space is uh, contracted and there is scarring noted in the first web space. And uh, syndactylization of the second web space is also uh, noted. The volar aspect of the uh, uh, palm is relative, uh, relatively spared, except for the uh, thinner region, there is some uh, mild uh, scarring is there, except for the rest of the palm and the volar aspect of the digits is relatively uh, uh, unspared and there is no scarring noted. And uh, wrist and uh, uh, forearm are uh, relatively spared. And then palpation, these are also uh, supple and uh, these uh, scars are supple and there is no local rise of temperature and scars are uh, non-blanching. Uh, sensations are intact distally and the vascularity of the left hand is also uh, uh, okay. Both the radial and uh, ulnar pulsations were felt. Uh, range of movements, active and passive ranges both are uh, reduced. Uh, I have a video for the same. Active ranges of the active uh, IP joint uh, uh, flexion and MCP uh, flexion is possible in the middle finger and uh, MCP flexion is limited, active MCP flexion is uh, limited in the remaining uh, fingers and active ranges of the thumb are uh, uh, not there. Come to the uh, passive ranges, the uh, uh, passive ranges are uh, present but they are also limited, uh, are limited. more than compared to the active ranges but passive ranges of the thumb are also uh, reduced and passive DIP joint extension is uh, possible and ranges are uh, complete in the middle finger, PIP joints and uh, uh, DIP joints and the other fingers, the passive ranges of PIP joints are also uh, reduced but they are uh, more when compared to the active ranges. Examination of uh, uh, donor sites, uh, for skin grafts, uh, I have examined the both thighs, uh, both thighs previously uh, split skin uh, grafts uh, skin grafts are harvested and uh, they have healed well uh, with no hypertrophic scarring and uh, legs and arms are uh, spared and for flap of, uh, for flaps uh, in the forearm uh, forearm is unscarred and uh, for PIA flap uh, and the reverse uh, and the abdomen region and groin region are also no normal uh, sir uh, my diagnosis in this patient uh, bilateral post bone deformity of uh, hands 
left term more than uh, right both are macaulay grade 4 of 18 months duration with these following problems dorsal contracture of the both hands with uh, ncp joints in hyperextension and pip joints in flexion in all four fingers except for the middle finger uh, which is in pip joints is in an extended position and reduced fan of the first web space in both hands uh, left uh, uh, first web space in the left hand is more contracted when compared to the right side and uh, syndactyly of the multiple uh, web spaces noted in the both hands good no yeah. Yeah, i think you made a fairly good, good presentation so you now we'll get to the x-rays uh, i didn't know you got the x-rays yeah come along come show the x-rays uh, yes, uh, this was the x-rays provided to me sir ap views and uh, oblique views mm. yeah 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 carry on uh, uh, sir uh, in this x-rays the mp joints are in a hyper extended position sir uh, and the metacarpal heads uh, of the little finger and the dorsal, uh, little and uh, uh, ring fingers, there uh, somewhat uh, dorsal subluxation is there, but NCP joint space is uh, present, sir. Coming to the PIP joints, uh, joint space is narrowed in the PIP joints uh, of the ring and little fingers, sir, when compared to the other fingers. Yes. And proximal phalanx of the thumb is also uh, subluxated uh, on the, from the metacarpal of the thumb. Apart from the good. Do uh, Do you have anything else, uh, Nishant, to contribute? Yeah, uh, no yes, diagnosis. Yeah, hmm. yeah. One thing is you are given the diagnosis of a nicely diagnosed. I think this is correct, and here also it'll be okay. I think only thing you have left out the thumb at all, no. See, there is no thumb here, nothing which is the most important. Actually, any hand you take, it has got two parts. I always used to say one is the thumb, other is the fingers. Okay, so thumb, the classic thing that the thumb has got. Now, you put the x ray, you will know. So, I put the x ray, you will find they got a Z deformity of the thumb. Like a classic, it's called as a so you have a Z deformity of the thumb. So, these are all now, yeah, they're, they're Z deformity. Even if you say, if you want to describe it, it's very difficult. But if you say Z deformity of them, everyone will understand. Okay, what's the what's the problem they have? Okay, so that will be thing. Go back to diagnosis. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, you said reduce the span of the first web space. Now, what do you call this? Huh? You have a nicer, nicer word you can put for this. You can put in a first web space, first web space contracture. No? First web space uh, contracture. Contract. Yeah, contracted for reduced span of the space. Because this word span, you know, that itself we can talk for a long time. What do you mean by span? So I think we leave it now. So if, uh, what I always say for the postgraduates is that every word that we use, you know, we have to say what, what exactly you mean by that. No? So that's what. So spanning means you now you're covering a distance or covering. So you say you now the hand span. So when you do a ray, um, when you do a ray resection in a hand, you will say the span of the uh, palm is reduced. Okay, that that you use the word span. So here I think the right word to use will be, uh, uh, yeah, contracted first web space or uh, first web space contractures of both hands. That that would be fine. Okay, so, so diagnosis part of is fine. I think you did a nice job in uh, a presentation. I think most of the plastic surgery. The diagnosis is written on the face, you know, so all of us are very easy to diagnose. And uh, the things that I would say whenever I examine a, um, a difficult burn like this, okay, so what are the things I look for? Uh, what are the things I look for is that uh, is the wrist okay? That, that, that's what I used to think. You know? Is the wrist okay? I think is the wrist movement okay? That is a big thing. You know? So once the wrist is okay, that means you are uh, covered up a lot of things you can cover, or you, you are passed out. But if the wrist is flexed and then along with it, a lot of contractures come like this and all, no? When you come, I think the treatment treating these guys are very difficult. Particularly, you have got a flexed wrist, you know, that, that guys are very difficult and if they are longer duration, so the wrist is fine. That's the first thing I look. Second thing I look is that um, um, uh, whether they got um, dorsal contracture plus the volar contracture. I think this case, this chap has got a, a fingers flexed, you know, okay? When the three fingers, there is a palmar uh, contracture is present and the dorsal contracture is present, okay? So that makes it complex. That is the next one, is the complex thing uh, we find. Third thing that you will think of is donor areas. Now, I was just looking for, you know, whether you say donor areas, no? So skin grafts are fine, heel donor areas, that's when thigh is good. The abdominal flap areas, no, that's fine. Okay, you, that is good. You see all this, that means you, know, you are set for success. And I think you'll be, you'll be okay. 
so the question is you know so we can take it from various ways we can uh, take the questions uh, first is some examiners will start off asking you know um, uh, ask, I always talk you know, Dr. Puri ask a question do you think you could have prevented it in the first place so from there you can start or you could start off with the treatment part of it you could start okay so all those what do you think you should have grafted first okay so okay now just briefly Okay, uh, do you, uh, how do you think we could have prevented it in the first place? Uh, yes, sir. Um, in the initial uh, phases, uh, uh, first thing uh, is by uh, uh, immobilizing the uh, hand in uh, uh, position of immobilization uh, is uh, one thing, sir, and uh, providing uh, limb elevation and other anti edema measures. Uh, you, see, uh, you told me, no? You used the word, no? Position of immobilization. What is that? Uh, step, uh, in the position of immobilization, uh, this will be in 15 to 20 degrees of dorsiflexion and MP joints will be in uh, 70 degrees uh, of uh, uh, flexion and IP joints will be kept straight uh, in that position. So. Yeah, but then you, you see, Nishantana, you have you think in any... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, do you think in any, any burn patient in you know, the acute phase, you know, you'll be able to get this, uh, this 90, 70 and all that, and, uh, 70 days, uh, nobody, nobody will learn. The most important thing is that now you must get these guys, you know, wrist to be extended. Okay, once you get the wrist extended, then it's fine. And as far extension as possible, I think as far flexion is possible, uh, most of them, you know, they'll be having a... So I think that's what is the... Uh, you will have. So, and you must keep them elevated. I think that's the thing. You must splint them. You really find the number of times the major burns happens and the number of instances where they, are, they have got plasters in their hands, I think you will find it in a very less. I think you must splint them. I think that's the very important. And splint them and then you need to um, keep them uh, elevated. And then question, comes the question, no? whether you need to, when you will graft them is the question. See, suppose a patient has got a major burn. Okay, suppose if you got a 50-60 percent burns, you got, oh, okay, you take 40 percent burns. Okay, uh, hypothetical question: A 40 percent. What was his total burn surface area for him? 35 percent, sir. Mm. 30. No? So just imagine it's about 50-55. Okay, and he has got a one hand, you know, burnt like this, or two hands like burnt like this. So, uh, will this be a priority, or just the healing of the other areas will be priority? What will be your priority in your, in grafting for these people? Sir, in a case of 50% uh, uh, burn, sir, uh, with hand burns. Yeah, 50% burn, but there is got a bilateral hand burns. Uh, what will be your priority? Uh, will be grafting him uh, for the hands first or for his... Uh, ch most of the areas that have been burnt, or you think, imagine, no, they are chest wall and back, neck or the ones that are burnt, okay? So what will be your uh, priority in the hand of the rest of the areas? 50% burns and uh, one one thigh is also burnt. So what will you, what will be your priority? Uh, sir, uh, for covering up the... Uh, sir, hands will be... Uh, uh, priority uh, hands and major joints they will be priority sir uh, but not in the uh, if, if not at all the first regions to be grafted definitely i won't leave the hands to be the last regions to be grafted yeah but in, in fact now what you should do when it's a 50 percent burns you know first is survival you know? so okay. if at all if all you have say many people will say hand burns is be grafted okay so not necessarily i think first thing is in a major burn make him survive make him live you know i think that's the main thing you need to have and then, so that one, uh, early, early grafting should be, if you're all you're practicing early grafting, the early grafting will be for the hand, the rest of it will make him live. And then also graft, because the amount of grafts that are required for the hands and fingers is huge. Eh? I think if you really have you know, major burns of the hand both sides, you know, it takes a lot of time and then a lot of effort, and then it takes. So they have to live, and then, then if at all is possible, then you go along with the hands also, you will... Uh, you will go on. No? So these are the things that you say. So now, you know, because I don't think we'll have a lot of time, but then in each case, you know. So for this, now, how will you proceed, uh, Nishant? What will be your uh, treatment plan? The wrist is good. Uh, what, will be, what will be your treatment plan? You know? Of course, necessary surgery, and you will uh, work him up for surgery. He is good. He is an excellent candidate for anesthesia. He is willing to get done. Anything he wants to get done, he will get done. What, what will be your plan? 
sir uh, in this patient both hands are involved sir he is right dominant individual and there is some uh, function more in the right hand when compared to the left hand uh, mm. first i'll release the uh, right hand sir uh, okay right hand Uh, right hand release dorsal contracture uh, uh, release i will i'll bring the mcps into uh, flexion along with the first web space and uh, along with other web space also i will uh, release them sir and uh, if at all the surface is graftable i will go ahead with uh, grafting or else make plans for uh, flat yeah. cover also okay but then see, see but um, here is a one problem you know what you would have is the initial you find that the index finger um, ring and little or they are all not flexed you know see suppose if you would uh, release their uh, dorsal contraction they are all bury into the palm isn't it not yes sir hmm. then 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 what will you do how will you how will you do that see okay. if you find no so suppose you want to correct the correct the dorsal contractures first So this is a great, this is a great, this is a this is a great case, you know, because uh, usually in plastic surgery, most plastic surgery, you know, or any plastic surgery, two things are very important. One is timing, other is sequence. They always time, you know, sequence and timing are everything in a major trauma, <clears throat> any trauma reconstruction, burn reconstruction, timing and sequence. Okay. So when I used to um, sometimes we talk, I used to. Put a picture of that um, circus, you know, trapeze, you know. So they used to send the this thing, and then somebody has to jump and catch, you know. Okay. So there, I think, what is the real thing is the timing and the sequence. Okay. Similarly, we are also like circus artists, you know. So here, so uh, my question is, uh, you release the dorsum, and then you, um, you um, then you will get that uh, these three fingers burying into the palm. So is it not? So how would you address that? Suppose if I am the examiner, I ask you, what will you answer? Yeah, you can answer anything. You know, you can tell any sequence and then get away with it. You no, know, provided you explain it. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, first priority is to bring the uh, MPs down uh, into MPs into uh, flexion, sir. Uh, yeah. And after releasing the MP flexion, I will assess the PIP uh, uh, extension whether it is possible or uh, not. Uh, It won't be possible, no. Once you release MP, the, the, the contraction on the volar side will always be the contraction on the volar side, isn't it? So, in fact, no. Um, um, okay, how I would do is this, no. See, uh, I think the subsequent talk, no. I said I, I, I wanted this talk, this your presentation to go, so that I then I could, could talk. See, if I had to have this hand, so what do I would do is that at the end of the first surgery or the first of the surgery, no. You must be able to make that chap work. Okay, you must be able to yeah, make that hand useful. So for that, I used to always think, you know, the thumb must meet the fingers. Okay, the goal of this burn hands reconstruction is that the thumb has to meet the fingers. So then, if you have that as the idea, I think I always have that as the idea. Then I think, you know, why does this not thumb meet the fingers? Okay, I think. So why is this thumb not meeting the fingers? Now you list them, no. Why is the thumb not meeting the fingers? You list them. First web space is contracted, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. First web space is contracted. Very good. Then second. The of the thumb is in hyperextension. Yeah, uh, that's right. No, it's got a Z deformity. Z deformity. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes. Z deformity with the the um, um, hyperextension part of it at the MCP joint. Again, the two ways you can get the Z. You know, you can also get a Z. with the ip joint flexion no you can get ip joint flexion and uh, <clears throat> then again you can get uh, this sort of the other part of z you can get it and the other part of z one part of other part of z is you could get this way also you could get you could get now uh, hyper extension at the um, uh, ip joint the other way it's almost like a button here no this again is z this is another z and this is the one z okay this type of so z deformity of thumb first web space contracture next Yeah, come along. What are the uh, why does not his fingers finger tips meet the thumb? So you understand my point? Now? Yes, how sir. I look at it? Yeah, how I look at it? Now this guy, yeah, after your surgery, after Nishant operates, you know, when he says he must thank you, he said now I am able to hold things. See, suppose if you do this only, you know, dorsal contraction only, you do, you won't hold things. You know? Again, uh, before operation also uh, he was um, uh, disabled. After operation also he is disabled, correct? 
So yes, now yeah, he, he couldn't do that. Okay, the surgery he must be able to do that. So what are the things? One is first first phase is correct. Is Z deformity of thumb correct? Third, the next point. Why is in thumb not meeting the fingers? Third. It's quite easy, man. Flexion contracture of the three fingers. Flexion you know? contracture yeah. of the other three fingers. Yeah, the flexion contracture of the three fingers is the third point. Fourth point is dorsal extension contracture of the MCP joints. MCP joints. Yeah, correct. Yes, sir. So uh, you, you, you need to write them both. You need to write them. No, I always know. Initially, I used to write when I was young, but now mentally I make the point. Okay, these are the four things which are making him not use his hand. So now we'll correct all the four. Okay, in, in that way, we have to correct all the four, we have to correct. So now, so first is the thing, what is told is the first web space contracture, you said, no? Okay, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. How, uh, yeah, how will you release the first web space contracture? Yeah. So I want to bring the contract first web space out like this, correct? You want to bring it out, right? First web. So uh, just now, uh, where will you put the incision? You just mark it in your, uh, this thing, no? Yes, sir. Yeah, you just, uh, you just can... Uh, Put a cursor. I don't know whether you can put a cursor and show. I don't know. So where will you mark the incision? Uh, sir. Or you speak, you know. If you're not able to do that, you can speak. Or you, uh, can sir, tell, uh, uh, you can see the uh, marking, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it. Uh, red line coming. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. Uh, yes, very, very good, very good. Yes, good. So there you go. So, uh, of course, that, that, that will do that, okay? So once you put the skin incision, Nishant, you go up to that, you go. I can 100% say now it will only release the contracture that is found in the. Uh, what are the other things that are contracted over there? Next, you know, uh, beneath the skin. After that, what are the things that are which are holding it back? Yes, uh, skin subcutaneous tissue, uh, fascia over the first dorsal interosseous and the adductor pollicis. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got them. Muscles also must have uh, uh, shortened yeah. over a period of time. Yeah, then this guy muscles. Okay, muscles also shortened. Now, how will you release the muscles? Uh, they have to be released from their uh, origin. Uh, in, uh, yeah, you origin. have to. Uh, yeah, you release them from origin. So one thing now, what I have found is that now when you make this, normally everyone says now we have to do this, right? So you do this, but then you find 100% uh, you know it not get contracted. So what will happen when you release it like this? The hand, you know. So the hand, what will happen is the hand will go off like this. So this again will lead up to the hand becoming. Uh, release the first wave space is increased, but then you cannot really you know put it back. You know you cannot really put it back. So what you have to do is that you no. Know, so in addition to making an incision here, okay. In addition to making an incision here, that incision must get on to the base of the thumb. Okay. So this has to go come here like this. Okay. The incision has to come here. The in horizontal incision. I think next time you know, when you work, you do this. You try. So yeah, an incision here gets the thumb out okay of course it makes the web space bigger but it, it does make the web space better but then what would happen is you know you should try to get it uh, you, you need to get it forward okay you need to get it forward now that is very important you need to get it forward that means you, know, you need to bend like this that means the contracture will be here so all the time when i have found you make an incision here and then forward it on to the dorsal side. Okay, so then you will get it. I think this is an important point you can learn. And that's one. And the next point, what you told is correct. Uh, that is, the muscles will be contracted. So you must not uh, divide. Why should you divide it from the origin, uh, Nishant? You said okay, that, that the answer is correct. Uh, why should you um, uh, cut it from the origin? Why not uh, cut it in the middle? Middle or the insertion. So, what is the point in uh, um, uh, cutting it at the origin? We can uh, provide another. Or, uh, we, uh, Sorry. Not just, uh, so, why you need to cut it from origin is um, these muscles. You know, if you scrape it off from the origin from the bone, they all glide back. You no, know? they all sl slide down. But still, they will be having their blood supply and their nerve supply. Okay, that's very important. See, yes. suppose you cut it in the middle, what will happen? No, they are the, the nerves you know, which are supplying, they are supplying it at the base. So if you cut it in the middle, that means there will not be connection. Or suppose you cut it halfway through or one third. If that one part of it, no, they will get denervated. So they again this loss. So 
what you do is now you just cut it off from the base. Okay, once you cut it off or scrape it off from the insertion, suppose first those the intro means you know it takes from the both from the here and the here. No, so from the bone you slide it, then it's fine. Okay, from the adductors, no, from the third metacarpal you slide it, then it slides down. So that's the reason now we say why you should take it from the from the base you slide it down. So and then after that now okay you take it out. So once you do this. Uh, one of the important thing is you can never put a graft. Okay, first first space. If you release it and then if you are releasing it really well as the way as the, as this patient would need. Okay, not that we can never put a graft. We can put a graft in some places. But if you are really if you are going to a stage where you are going to work on the muscles, that means you know it almost always you no know, 100% you no know, you need a flap. Okay. If you just put in a graft alone, you know they really don't work well. Okay, so you release it. Then what will you do? No, how will you maintain it? Uh, how will you maintain it in the space? Uh, we will keep it in permanent abduction and fix it with the uh, K wire, sir. Uh, yeah, how, how will you put K wire? How will you put the K wire? You put it uh, straight down here. But in this patient, you now what will you do? Okay, you you release the first phase space. This patient has also got a Z deformity, no? Correct. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how will you correct this Z deformity? Sir, uh, after the skin release, I will see uh, whether the MCP joints can be brought into flexion or not. Uh, if, uh, even after skin release, MCP joint of the thumb is cannot be brought into flexion. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, even is not brought into flexion, what will you do? Uh, I will uh, release the dorsal capsule of the MCP joint of the thumb and uh, capsular release and ligamentous release. I'll uh, do, sir, yes. and I'll see whether it can be uh, it can come into uh, flexion. Even then, if it is not coming, uh, yeah. uh, then uh, bony procedure has to be done to uh, yeah, bring correct. it back into flexion. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would guess in this patient, you know, once you release, as I told, and then what you would do is, you know, make an longitudinal incision on the MCP joint. Okay, it'll be very very difficult to release this uh, gap. Gap. So almost always, what we would do is that you now you do you do an MCP joint arthrodesis. Okay. That's the best. Okay, you arthrodesis it. So then what you can do, you can take a little of a bone this side and that side. You can take. You could now arthrodesis it in the good position with the 10 degrees of flexion. You keep. You know, so a full release of the web, a full release of the web, and a 10 degrees of flexion like this. You keep. And the next thing that is very important when you why I'm saying this is good because when you arthritis, it gives you an opportunity to you place your thumb, you know, you can we can rotate your thumb. So ideally, you know, that the pulp, ideally at the end of the day, you want your pulp to meet the rest of the fingers. Okay. So here, so when you do that, you have to be very careful. You have to see when you place it, it's not just not, not taking it and then putting it back. Sometimes I find when people are through this, the thumb will be looking at now outwards. You know? So when this fellow goes, when this goes to meet, okay, instead of meeting the pulp, okay, it's there. You see on a hand, you know, the most important thing in the hand is one not only you know, they, uh, they uh, lift up, okay, and also pronate, you know, that's very important. You also, all of you who are listening, you know, okay, just to see your hands, you know, your, your own hands, you see, you just uh, make an opposition movement, you find the one of the important moment is you now they have palmar abduction, you will have. And then what you will call as you know, when it goes down, you will have a pronation of the thumb. So when it's only when the thumb pronates, that only means you know, then only the pulp to pulp catch. You know. So here to felicitate that, when you do this, what you will do is you will also make a mild tilt, you know, a little bit of the tilt you will make and then fix it so that that makes it. So now we have released the thumb. The Z deformity, the best way of easily correcting it here in this that now you do an arthrodesis. Okay. And taking care to see that there's a mild amount of you know, pronation when you when you fix it, that's one you're done. Okay, that part of it is fine. Okay, then let us come to this. You know what I would do is that see if you have a, a finger like this, you know, a three. It's so surprising. You know, this guy has got identical contractures on both hands. Huh? Okay, so I used to many times. <laughs> many times I don't know how how his middle finger went, uh, uh, went this way and the rest of the fingers. So what we would do is. If they have a very severe contracture of the flexion contracture of the fingers, okay, you must address them first. Okay, you must address them first because if you do a lot of work on the dorsum, and then you told me after that you will see whether you're able to release. Okay, see so where does the blood supply go to the fingers? Now the, most of the blood supply is in the 
polar side of the hand. Okay, and if you disturb a lot of things on the dorsum, okay, a lot of things on the dorsum you disturb, and then after that you are trying to stretch the uh, fingers, you know, then there is a lot of possibility of a compromise in blood supply. So if you have any burn contracture with yeah, fingers like this, okay, fingers are flexed like this. The first thing is that you should is that you should at least you know, get them like not necessarily to full. You are not necessarily full. At least you now you have to get in such a way that when you release the MCP joint, this fellow will meet. Okay, that's the most important. I think without that, going for the dorsum is not good. You release this, then you find the fingers are all very viable, very nice and good. Okay, and then you go to the others. So without before going, you know, you'll also think whether. Once you release, you have to think, hey, what am I going to cover this up with? Okay, is it all right if a graft alone will be okay? Or it requires a flap that you have to think. Okay, so if you think, you know, it requires a sort of a graft alone is okay, means you know, what you have to do, you have to fix it with wires, K wires, you know, because otherwise they always spring back. And then you need to put in the graft and you need to get it out. And then you get onto the dorsum of the hand, you know, you will get onto the dorsum of the hand. Okay. And then you know you should do them. But I would also prefer you know that everything has to be done in one stage, because as I told you, at the end of the stage, you know, at the end of the surgery, when it, when you finish, when you divide the flap and all that, you divide the flap, and it goes. You must be able to do something. You must be able to do. As if it's not able to do, you no, know, then they are, that means you know, they won't come back again. And because it goes through a five to four to six weeks of work, all that you work. At the end of the day, you may say that he has got a better better hand and all that. For him, a better hand is a hand, you know, which is useful hand is the better hand. If it is not useful, it's not a better hand. I think that's it. Okay, so that that's what no, um, uh, we will do with this um, hand. Okay, what flap will we choose, um, uh, Nishan? Uh, for only uh, first wave space, sir. Uh, no, no, uh, first wave space, and also no, you're you're a great guy. So uh, we release the first, we release the fingers. The all our contraction of the fingers we released, and we think you know they all can accept grafts. They are you are able to release about you now to bring it about you know, 70 degrees in the PAP joints and 70 degrees in the this thing, and then there are raw areas in the fingers, and then then you you find the fingers are viable and pink, and then you are you gone ahead and release the dorsum, right? Dorsum, you know how will you release? You know, you put a uh, can you put in a line as to see how how will you release the dorsum? Yeah, uh, yes. Sir. It's good, man. Nice to have some tech savvy people. No, you're all doing well. You're putting a red line and all you're doing. Good, good. Sir, first I'll mark the MCP joints, sir. Yeah. Uh, proximal to uh, it, uh, two to four centimeters proximal to it, I'll mark the incision, sir. Okay, you, you, okay, you just make it. No, then how will it get down? No, then after that, what will you do? <laughs> See, once you do that, okay, then, then you you mark the you you your this thing has got a line here, you good, but then this won't release, you know. Commonly, I find exam also everyone says no, that line only they mark. Okay, you make the line means there only been incision, you don't go at all. So unless you know, of course, it is combined with the first wave space release, there'll be gap here. The most important thing is you have to go up and down like that, no. So that also you must go, both sides it has to go. Okay, yes, both sir. both sides it has to go, both sides it has to come down, no. Okay, and then only and then you have to yeah, get this. So here, so you now you would release the um, uh, skin skin part of it. You release. Then what is the next thing you release? Uh, sir, uh, after releasing the uh, skin, I will see for whether the MCP joints are coming into flexion. If they are not coming into flexion, I will uh, release the uh, capsulotomy of the MCP joints. I will uh, do, sir, underneath the uh, uh, skin flap. And even then, if they are not coming, I will do the release of the collateral uh, ligaments. And, yeah, but cap uh, capsulotomy means it's the part of collateral ligament also you have to exist. Only then you have to. Yes, mm. Okay, so you. Mm, okay, carry on. Uh, even after release of the collateral ligaments, uh, if they are not coming into flexion, I will uh, release the uh, volar plate which has come in between the metacarpal head and the uh, proximal uh, phalanx. I will uh, free the uh, volar plate. And. Uh, Yeah, carry on, carry on. Yeah, 
after that i'll uh, uh, after that i'll bring my mts down and i will see whether the skin flap which uh, whether the uh, uh, skin flap which is distal to the incision whether it is able to cover the ncp joints or not if mm. they are not able to cover the ncp joints and the scapula of the ncp joints is exposed then they will require a flap cover sir or else they it can get away with the uh, uh, grafting sir uh, no yeah, yeah. No, okay, good. No? So uh, I think that's a good one. No? So uh, that's what you have to. You need to start off with that incision like that, and then you have to get on. So uh, normally what I do is now we combine off both the first web release and the, this thing. So one of the important message is that now when you have a flexion, first address the volar side first, bring it as much as you can come, and then start on with the dorsal side. No, that, that's the only that's the message you know I like to. Um, uh, convey okay so then most of the times when i require a flap if you are doing so much and you also got a web space and it, it makes so much sense to uh, bring it down and then put in a flap and all this so what will you take care now when you do an mcp joint capsulotomy what is that that you will take care hello nishant you are online uh, yes sir uh, uh. Only the uh, uh, dorsal capsule only we will uh, release. Uh, first, you should. I'll tell you how to release the dorsal capsule. You know? So you need to go under the. Of course, you may talk also. I'll cover. You need to go under the um, uh, extensor expansion, and then uh, make an incision so that you no, know, you will be the complete. And then you need to. You can uh, put in your uh, um, uh, curve tip scissors or something like that, and then open up. We are asking somebody to pull up the, this thing. You need to introduce your uh, knife into the joint, and then you know cut off on the sides. You know, you, you correct, correct it. Like you have a fair tissue, you have which is keep cutting, and you have to cut on both sides. In this type of level of contractures, without uh, cutting the collateral ligaments, you can never get them. Okay, you never get them. But the most important is when you do this. Uh, many times you will find out that the base of the proximal pharynx will buckle over the. Uh, head of the um, 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 metacarpal. So, if you want to, um, many times we find people doing this where there's a skin cover over there. They'll try to bend it, and then you know, with forceful they'll bend it, and then they'll pin it. But then you find, unless the articular surfaces are in contact, okay, this this uh, proximal phalanx must glide over this and come to the other side. Mm -hmm. The commonest cause of 100 percent cause of the failure is that you now we will fail to achieve that. It's very difficult to achieve. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience to do that. Only when it is achieved, then only you need to be content. Okay, in the talk now, I'll put, put that as uh, diagrammatically. I will explain to you as to how you should uh, do that. No, that that part of it. So then you must pin it, and then make it a whole flap. You know, you must make it as a flap. So one important point I would like to tell everybody. You know, so when you make a first flap space release, um, most of the times now I find uh, people. You know, Releasing it like this, okay. So that is, you are positioning the thumb in extension, okay. That never should be placed like that. Whether you are fixing it for trauma, you are fixing it for after a burn contracture release, you must always be kept in just the palm or abduction. No? So they must be in kept in palm or abduction, and how far abducted you have to think you have to keep. You no, know? so it's at the outer border of the index finger, okay. You have to keep it like the outer border of the Index finger because major any reconstruction you do, when you want to try to fix it, it's the outer border of the index finger. The reason being, suppose you're putting it here. Okay, if it's going inner inner side, you put it. Then what will happen by some unfortunate thing? You know, this is not moving or something. And then what will happen is when the fingers are bending, this will be in the this will be in the thumb will be in the way. If it is too far out, then what will happen? Even if the index finger wants to touch, and it won't touch. Okay, if it is away from the outer border of the index finger, if it is there, then what will happen is it is very difficult. You can try in your own hand; it is not possible. So you have to think of all this, and then these are all very simple tricks, you know, as to where will you place your this thing. So what we do is that we pass the wire across the uh, metacarpal from here, it drives from here to here, you know, it drives from uh, uh, here to here, it drives. You place it in the position like this, abducted, palm are abducted. The thumb and the outer, the outer border of the index finger. Okay, that's very important. Outer border of the index finger, and the pulp, you know, facing the pulp of the middle finger. Okay, all these are important. Okay, each point is important because 
functionally they are going to make a big difference if it is not there. So and then the, these are the points which you have to put that and then you put on a, a flap you put them okay you will have to keep keep the k wire zone uh, and uh, when you remove the k wires and how will be the post op mobilization uh, regime uh, nishant uh, sir uh, after uh, three weeks i will uh, remove the k wires sir uh, mm -hmm. with the k wires in situ i will ask the therapist to fabricate the splint and mm -hmm. uh, we will remove the k wires and uh, 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 keep the uh, 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 patient in uh, splints. Uh, splints mm. has to be worn for uh, almost uh, 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 complete throughout the day, except for uh, when the uh, uh, except for the range of motion exercises. Uh, splint has to be worn continuously at least for the first six months. Uh, yeah. And the later part of the, after six months, nighttime splinting can be continued. Yeah, if we are using only grafts, we will continue splinting for even more prolonged periods. Mm. So one of the important things in post-op period, what will happen? See, suppose you are putting a graft, okay? Uh, this is for knowledge sake, you know. So if you are putting a graft in the palm for the fingers in post burn contracture or putting on the dorsum, even for neck contracture release. So one of the important things I say is that now you need to ensure 100% take of the graft, okay? 100%. Okay, even if you take, you know, even if it, the graft takes about 95%, it's a failure because if only it takes 100%, you can get on with the next stage of um, um, massaging, um, all these things, mobilization and all that. And suppose you get a patchy, small patchy areas of graft loss. That means still he has to come for a dressing. I, I look at it that way. That means still the patient has to come to you for dressing. That For that, you know, he spends one. And secondly, there are a lot of dressings around, you know. With the dressings around, physiotherapists can't do physiotherapy. So the most important thing is that now you need to massage the graft. You need to put a compression garment. You can't put a compression garment. You can't massage a graft. So when you do a post burn contracture, if at you know, three weeks or between three and four weeks, you have in you know, a patchy areas of graft loss. Even if it is you now one square centimeter of raw area, you put a one square centimeter of graft you put on. Okay. Only when you do that, you know, then what will happen is then only you need to have a fully healed wound by three weeks or at the maximum four weeks. If not, that means you know, the result will be always be compromised. I think that's one of the commonest causes for you know, compromises in um, uh, this thing. So then you will give compression garments and then splinting and then uh, go on to uh, range of motion exercises that you will go, okay? So I think that that will be the things you know, in this. Uh, so you have any other questions you like to ask, you know? Uh, sir, uh, one question, sir. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, if the PIP joint flexion is not because of, uh, uh, per se, if there is no pharma skin, uh, pharma digital skin is not uh, burnt and it is not scarred, and this mm. PIP flexion is because of the damage to the central slip on the dorsum of the finger. Yes. Uh, at the time, what we will do, sir, we will address the, uh, uh, then we will have to do the only, uh, uh, bring the MPs down first, or uh, how will we address the PIP joint? Yeah, that's a great, later. Yeah, that's a great question. No, you're a thinking guy, man. Very good, man. Okay, see, that means if you say the, the PEP flexion can be by two things. One is volar skin contracture, and the other is uh, if it's going to center slip rupture and all. Most of the times, if you find the center slip rupture, means you know, what will happen is you'll, these guys will go in for a putna deformity. So, a lot of times, you will find a burn deformities like that. So, you will have uh, the flexion here, but uh, very, very highly unlikely these guys will have a flexion of the um, DAP joint. Right. And you understand now, okay? Very highly unlikely these guys will be have a yeah, correct. Okay, suppose if the center slip is lost, the dorsal kind of um, uh, burns. If you go, they will find no, they are not be there. But if they have a, a botanical deformity, then I won't correct the PAP joint deformity. Okay, the reason being the uh, the DAP joint is hyperextended. Correct. If the DAP joint is hyperextended, so that means it gives enough of time for the fingers to uh, meet. Okay. So if you have a central slip problem, flexion of the PAP joint, with the extension of the DAP joint, that means you, know, you don't have to address it. So many times I used to say, you know, the botanical deformity is a functional deformity. Okay, there are two deformities that can happen at the PAP joint. One is um, botanical deformity, which is the loss of central slip. The other is a swan neck deformity. Okay, swan neck deformities are always you know, non-functional deformities. Every swan neck deformity has to be operated. Okay, every swan neck deformity will have to be operated. 
But Bodnian deformities, they are all functional deformities. You really have to think whether you will be able to give a better result. Okay, only then you need to operate a Bodnian deformity. Okay, that is the, does that answer your question, Nishant? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, what are the other questions? Um, in, in this. Um, Sir, if the uh, injury is to the central slip as well as uh, the uh, uh, lateral bands, mm -hmm. because the Burn. uh, burns are extending entire uh, dorsum of the fingers also in this mm -hmm. case, mm -hmm. and uh, the palmar aspect is not at all involved. I so see. in those conditions. Uh, mm -hmm. So in these conditions, what I do? Is that a burn butnier deformity? You know? Burn butnier deformity or a burn flexion, a PEP joint flexion contracture. It's very difficult to we, um, get the tendon, tendon works. So it's not possible to do tendon yes. work. I don't think anyone today has done a tendon work over there. Okay. Yes. So here, straight away, you, know, you must do an arthro disease. Yes. Straight away. Straight away. Okay. Yes. PEP joint arthro disease. Now, yes. Nishant, there are a lot of small tricks in doing this arthro disease, right? So when you have a flexion at the PEP joint, the first thing is, you know, in plastic surgery is access. Okay, access is very important. I think for any surgery you take, you know, you must think of, you know, access. Uh, access must be one which gives you to do whatever you like to do with minimum of, you know, mobility you have to take, you know. So here, if you took, if you have a very flexed PEP joint, uh, and most of the times when I say, okay, arthritis is that people always put a straight incision over the joint. Okay, and then try to do that. No? You must never do that. When you've got a hyperflexion deformity, whether it is the PAP joint or if it's the wrist, anywhere you know, where there's a hyperflexion, okay? So what you have to do, you have to put a curved incision you have to put, okay? You have to put a curved incision here, okay? The reason being, if you put a straight incision and then, you know, you make it straighter, then what will happen is, you know, even if you take a bone and collapse, the skin incision will become a diamond, okay? I don't know how many of you have seen that. Okay, if you put a straight inflection, you put a straight incision, then you straighten it. Then after that, no, you won't be able to close the skin. Okay, you need a flap. Okay, you know. so what you need to do, you need to put a curved incision or to put gentle curve. Okay, and when you put the curve incision, but once you put it, no, it has to go straight to the bone. Okay, what you have to do? Because the, already the skin is very thin. You need to have, you know, because you're going to do some bone work and after that it has to heal nicely, okay? You must not be making a thin flap you, because anyhow you are going to do arthritis. It's not going to move any other way due to the tendon. So what you need to do is that you know, straight to the bone and then lift it as a flap so the vascularity of that uh, flap is maintained because this is uh, skin you know, which is healed by, very, it is healed by uh, epithelialization. You know? So it's not, it has not got a great dermis. So you will not have that subdermal blood supply and all this. Now there's some amount of blood supply is keeping going on. And then you should, closure will also become easy. So here, if the volar screen is totally all right, nothing at all, then make a, this thing straight, make a small amount of incision in each of those, put in a KY by arthritis and uh, you can arthritis in about uh, 30 or 40, 30 degrees of flexion and that should be fine. Okay, a yeah, good question, right. Anyway, any more questions? Um, has anyone has any 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 of the attendees have asked any questions? Do you have it in the? No, sir. So no, no questions in the chat box, sir. Oh, I see, right now. So that that should be fine. Yes, sir.